Hi, my name is Julia Silge and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at Posit PBC. And today in this screencast, we're gonna look at this week's Tidy Tuesday on polling places in the United States. Here in the US, we are observing Martin Luther King Day um, this week, earlier this week. And this Tidy Tuesday, um, honors the work of Martin Luther King as, you know, with much of which involved voting rights. I, I've certainly heard, you know, on the news about polling places being closed, and I haven't really looked at the data myself, so I am looking forward to doing that today. Let's get started. All right, let's read in this data. Like I said in the, um, the intro, I um, have definitely heard in the news about changes in where polling places are in the U.S. So I'm pretty interested to look in this in more detail. So we've got this, this um, data set has you know 460,000 rows. And so we have for a given election date, where is this polling place? Where is this polling place? And where it came from, um, an address, uh, and all that type of thing. So let's start out by seeing like what uh, elections are included in this. Say election date. Whoops. Oh man. I have a co-pilot on, as you can tell, and sometimes um, sometimes I can type something f good faster for that. Okay, so let's look at this. So we have, uh, so in the U.S., main elections are in November, and you can see that we have a couple of sort of special elections in here. I think I probably don't want to include those. You can see that the number of polling places there is very different. Um, it is, we have uh, numbers here um, that actually look like they're increasing. So it actually looks like overall the number of polling places included in this data set are increasing. So um, if we look at, um, you know, if we were to count by, by state here, Um, you notice that this is not exactly the same as population in the U.S. So Illinois is a big state, but it um, is not the most populous state. It doesn't have the most people in it. And different states have pretty different practices around polling places. So this increase overall, you know, like could be um, like that that we don't necessarily know what's happening at local levels or in different part of the countries based on this. Um, I, you know, if I were to say, let's, let me find where, um, I, I live in Utah and let's find where, where this is. So it's at the very bottom, but, but in Utah, it, we are a low population state, but also we, um, have a very widespread vote voting by mail. So there are less places to go to vote, but we um, we all vote by mail, which is really convenient, and I'm really glad that we do. So the state-to-state -state differences and practices are very big. So how are we going to go about looking at this? Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to make a... Um, I am going to make a visualization. So I'm going to count... First, first, let me only take the November the November election. So this is a date. So if I can use um, uh, the, the yeah, that is what I want actually. So I'm going to use, this is a function from Lubridate. So if I were to say, um, you know, um, so if we say, when I did this, if I, let me show you how this will work. So if I say mutate, month equals month of election date. It takes this date object and pulls out the month here like this. So I'm going to say, I think this will work. We can, we can do an equals here. Um, it's always comparing things to a number, always iffy, but I think this will probably work. So if I only want to see the um, November elections, and then, then I'm going to count... I am going to count by state and election date like this, like so. 
So now I have for every state and every election date how many um, how many uh, polling places are there. So we have Alaska here. So Alaska uh, was stable from 2012 to 2018 and then increased. Um, Alabama, we only have one date. So it's incomplete here, information. And Arkansas, we see a big increase and then a huge decrease in Arkansas. Um, so let's let's make a plot with this. So we will do. Um, I am gonna put um, election date on the x-axis. Uh, yes, that is what I want. And then I am gonna put a little geom line. And I. I, I'm not going to be able to read all that, so I might as well just put that there. Okay, so let's start with this. Okay, pretty good. Let's make this. Um, let's make this a little bit more transparent. Let's make the lines a little thicker. Something like that. Let us put this, um, so states have a really big wide distribution, like a log normal distribution actually of populations and or polling paces. So let's put that y, um, that y axis on the log scale like that. Let us, um, um, this is, I mean, color here is useful, right? That I can see these lines, but let me, I think it'll be a little easier to see, a little more pleasant if I reorder those. So let's reorder state. I'm going to reorder state by um, N. Yep, that's right. So let's do that. Whoops. We'll reorder state by, whoops, I did it inside. Silly. Let's try that. Okay, um, I think this is a little easier to see. We could make it maybe use a veritas, uh, veritas D. Yep, I think that's right. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Let's zoom in here. Okay, so these, there are not 50 states on here because we don't have data on all 50 states. So what we're saying is for the states that we do have data, how are they changing over from 2012 to 2020? Um, overall, like my big takeaway here is these are very flat. These are very flat. So we're not seeing that all states in the United States are having big decreases. There certainly are some exceptions. We've got some states here that are, you know, this one's probably Arkansas, actually, like big increase and then big, huge decrease. We see some places that are having huge decreases. Um, well, one of the things I've heard about in the news is like some states moving from polling places, which are small, to these like larger voting centers. And I bet that's reflective of some of these. But then I do see I do see some really sort of gradual turn downs in some of these. Um so this gives us a picture of the states overall for which we have data, but how might I go about measuring change, measuring um, uh, change here in these different uh, states? So let's talk about how we could do that. So I am gonna, um, let's take, let's take this and let's save that. I'll call that by state. Here. So now this is what we're going to like look at. And, and we have at most one, two, three, four, five. The most we have is five. And Arkansas, for example, 2016 isn't in there for some reason. There's four, right? So there's very, it's definitely like limited data here. So um, let's look at, you know, Arkansas here. So I'm going to say filter state equals Arkansas. So here are these, these four that we have. So Arkansas is like in the 2000s, in 2018, it's huge, and then it drops a lot, right? So how can we, what's a good way for us to measure this kind, these kinds of changes? Um, you know, we could measure, we could measure like a numeric change, um, like how many polling places did, did Alaska 
gain or lose? How many did Arkansas gain or lose? But um, I think what I, my preference would actually be look at like a percent change um, over this time period. Uh, we could, you know, fit models, but we have, you know, we have, you know, one data point for some of these. Um, uh, let's see, like if I were to look at California, one data point. Um, Connecticut like has has five, right, and looks to be pretty stable. I, I don't think it's really, I'm not going to fit models to these like five data points. I don't think that's super useful. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so let's take the by state. Oh my gosh. Here we go. By state. And let us, first I'm going to group by state. Mm -hmm. Yep like that. And then I'm going to say mutate um, change. Yes, that is what I am going to say. So change equals n minus lag n. So uh, dplyr has in it these helpers for doing things like um, uh, computing lagging or leading variables. So with what I do is here, it's, uh, notice it's grouped by state. And then I say, okay, I want n minus the previous value of n, n minus the previous value of n, and puts it up here. So the na is the, um, is the, because there's nothing previous here, right? Um, so for, here's the first value for Arkansas, so it's previous, and then this is the change per year, like this. So this gives us, if I were, I can, like, look at this a little, um, more detail here. Let's look at, so here's, like, New, New Jersey. So here's the first value for New Jersey. It gained 40, it gained 5, it gained 12. Then we go to New Mexico. It gained 37. It gained another 78. It lost seven. So that's, we get kind of like a running um, change here. And then we can um, uh, summarize to, to like uh, summarize up that change. So I am going to, let's say the change is, yeah, so we can add up the change here. So if I did this, this would be the total change, uh, just like in the, by counts. So the counts of change. But remember, Arkansas, or sorry, let's compare, like Alaska only had three, like about 400 to start with, whereas Arkansas had... 2,500 to start with. So like, what is the relative change here? Like we could, we could look at this, but I think a more, what I would be more interested in is relative change. Like how much did it change here? So what I can do here is I can divide by um, one of these values. So I, if I divide by first n like this, that is, remember this is still all grouped. So I would take the total change and divide by the first value that we had. So relative to how many polling places these states had in 2012, how many have they gained, what proportion have they gained or lost over this time period? So this is now a proportion. So Alaska gained about 10%, Arkansas lost 60%. Um, so we got, now we have these like relative changes here. So let's call this, um, let's call this total change. It's like the total change over these years here. And like, what, like what's the distribution of this? I'll just say um, total change here. So, so um, we range from, uh, a decrease of 80%, so losing 80% of your polling places, to an increase of 60%, so like another 60, you know, 50, 60% of um, polling places. The, the, the median and mean are negative, right? So um, the more states are losing than gaining polling places, and the magnitude of the decreases look to be bigger than the magnitude of the e increases overall, overall, right? We can make a histogram of this. Um, that would be interesting, actually, making a histogram of this. But what I really want to do to wrap up here is see how this is distributed over around the country. So I'm going to make a map. So let me, I'm going to have, there's a, in ggplot2, there's a, the map data, um, the map data function. 
and I do want state here, but let's save this. So let's say this is states in the US. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna make that a tibble like that. So what does this tell us? So this, so group tells us which state it is. And then this is a, um, this is a uh, data frame that gives us polygons for the shape of um, the different states. So if we can, so if I were to say US states like this, I can say AS, um, so if I say long lat group, yeah, that's right, that's right. And so then I can say geom polygon, um, and this will just make, yeah, sure. This will make like a super plain map. So I think this will work, right? So there's the U.S. This is a really nice way to just, you know, quickly get a map of the U.S. Uh, and I can say chord, I think I'm going to use chord map, which has arguments that you can change, but what it does is it makes the, it fixes the, um, it fixes the the uh, the how it's projected. It fixes the projection of like because the U.S. is big enough that you want to have a reasonable um, projection. I think what happens if I do that? Maybe that's better. Mm, I'm gonna use just the map. This one you can do you can do different arguments here um, to um, change the particular projection, but this one's. This one's reasonable, reasonable. Okay, so here, so this is, here's the US, but we wanna get our, we wanna get this in. So remember that US states has the name in lowercase and we have a two digit, two character, um, a two character abbreviation in uppercase. So what we need is we need to make something that has both of those so that we can join this all together. So let's see, there is a thing called this, okay, state abbreviation. Let me make this go away again. So state abbreviation, so that's what I want and it is called state here. So this will let us join it up. And then I want to put in the name. Um, so, and that's called region here. So let me say, I'm constructing a little helper uh, tibble here to join things up. So it's called state um, name, I believe, right? But I need it to be lowercase. So I can say string to lower like this like that. So now this is what I need to uh, join this all up. So let me do inner join with this thing that I have made. So now if I run these two, and I didn't lose anything, did I? Nope. So I have the same number of rows here. No, I almost, I lost 10. I lost 10. Hmm. I'm just going to keep going. So, so I lost 10. It's probably like Hawaii or something, <laughs> Alaska, <laughs> something like that. Sorry, Hawaii and Alaska. Um, if we were to do a little more work, it would be better to make a better, a better map instead of one that only has, whoops, plots, that only, only does not have Alaska and um, Hawaii in it. Um, I, I, I could see if I anti-join, will I see what I don't have? Ah, District of Columbia. Okay, that's fine. Given that people in DC can't vote in, no, they can vote in federal elections anyway. Um, okay. Um, okay, great. And now I want to join this. This will be a left join because I don't have all the states in there. Total change. Yes, great. So let me run these three, see what happens. Great, so we have this change here. Um, total change for Alabama is in fact zero. Um, I think because we only had one measure for it. Great, okay. That looks good. And now what we want to put in here is I want to say, I need to add 
uh, fill equals this change right here like so and let's say so this will need to come out here um, oh no I need the color is the lines and I think if we can make some like really nice thin lines I think that will look nice okay great this is getting there um, I want to change this color scale. So I'm going to use a diverging color scale. I think the what I will use for that, I'll use the scale fill these brewers. So brewer, um, I want to use distiller so that I can um, get, um, get the kind of thing that I want. I don't, I don't want this palette. I want, but there is one I think that's like red, yellow, blue. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I think is zero at the middle. Zero really should be lower. I think I'm going to have to manually put in some limits. NA value, except I want my NA value. I just want it to be lighter let's say gray 90 maybe even lighter yeah okay okay so the default here is that it spreads that makes the limits the highest and the lowest value but our change is from 60 percent to 80 percent so I really would like that middle color I mean, this is what this is a choice here, right? Like you can see the spread here, but if I want that middle to be z at zero, if I want like the yellow, the middle yellow to be at zero, I have to make some limits. So I think, let me make that up here. So um, limits, so I'm gonna take the absolute value of total change, whoa. No, no, no. Total change. Um, so if we take the absolute value of this, and then I want the biggest one. Yep, okay, great. And then I need that, I need that positive and negative. So I'll say max here. Uh, times yeah like this so what this looks like is it, it I, I'm going to my data and I'm getting the biggest a magnitude number and I'm making that my limits and so then I can pass that in here limits limits like so not limits oh it's limit let's let's be less confusing here Wait, no, no, I would, now I'm using partial matching, which is terrible. Okay, great, let's do it like this. So now I see a lot more yellow because there's a lot of like not too much change here, right? I think the other thing I'd like to do is I wanna change the label for this, um, labels, I believe, and I wanna say scales label percent like that. Whoops, one too many. Okay. And so lab. So if um, this is the total change over this time period between 2012, like the net change, maybe I could say net change, total change. I um, have to think about that. Okay. So what we see here, so red on this plot indicates um, losing polling places. Blue, so like this is Maryland, this is Indiana, this is Arkansas. Arkansas we looked at already, right? It lost, it lost a lot. Blue indicates an increase in, um, 
in polling places. So North Dakota, New Mexico are increasing. Um, there's a lot of yellow and I, there's more things to the orange and red than to the blue. So more, so more states are losing polling places than are gaining polling places. So that's, and gray is where we don't have any data. And, um, uh, you know, I'm, it might be better to here to filter out that n is greater than one. Like I, you have at least because Utah, remember, was only in here once. Yeah, so we don't really have information about change for places like Utah with, that are only in this data set once or California. I think this is probably better. This is probably better. Uh, we, we, if we have some estimate of change, like at least two values, let's plot that here. So yeah, we see a few places that are blue. So like that would be, let me take this. So North Dakota. Um, went from 400, 400 up to the 600s, like almost 700. So yeah, this is that, um, you know, 50%, 60% increase. And if I were to look at, we already looked at Arkansas. If I were looking to Maryland here, like that's, that's dramatic. That's dramatic, right? So if I were to look at this more, I would probably like look at Maryland. Like, are they, are they one of the places that have moved to these larger voting centers? Like what are the practices that we see there? All right, we did it. We used summarization and visualization and mapping to look at, at the state level, how the numbers of polling places have changed. We definitely have seen over this time period from 2012 to 2020, 2020 a, um, a decrease overall. More states are losing than gaining polling places. There are some places that have lost a lot. Uh, this magnitude of the losses are bigger than the magnitude of any, any gains in polling places. Um, it would be interesting like f to look at this further like at the county level um, what kind of changes do we see there and uh, of course to understand um, what are what are some of these changes stemming from um, it's an election year <laughs> welcome to 2024 everyone um, so uh, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time